Hello and welcome to Magnetism and Electromagnetism Lesson 7, which is the last lesson. We're going to cover transformers in this lesson and just a reminder, this content is physics only. For this lesson, you're going to need a pen, some paper or an exercise book to make some notes and do some examples in, mobile phone out of the way unless you need to view this video on it, Keep all the distractions out of your way. You do also need a calculator for a couple of calculations in this. Straight into the starter, what can you recall? This is some recall from the beginning of the magnetism topic. I'm going to give you two minutes. Almost halfway through your time. Before you mark what you've got for question one, don't be tempted to talk about iron filings and sprinkling them around, although that does give you an idea of the pattern, it doesn't allow you to draw the magnetic field because you've got no direction, so we're going to be talking plotting compasses here. Step one, place a plotting compass close to one end of the magnet, mark with a pencil an arrow showing the direction that the compass is pointing because that's the way that the field is going. Move the compass to a different place, then repeat step two, so you draw another little arrow. Do lots and lots of arrows. And then when you've joined them up, you'll have a picture of the field in the right direction. And for the second question, it should look something like that. It always goes from north to south. Where the field lines are closest together is where the magnetic field is strongest. Now you will have some prior knowledge, either from the energy topic or the electricity topic. So we've talked about power stations before on the energy topic, and we've talked about transformers briefly in the bit on the national grid in the electricity topic. So you do know some stuff from lower down. That picture there may be something that jogs your memory. You've got cables, that's national grid transmission cables on the left there on the power station side we've got a step up transformer and then on the houses and factories side at the other end we've got a step down transformer so they're used on the national grid you may see something that looks like that near where you live it might be a modern equivalent of the building made out of breeze blocks but it's a similar thing it's a big transformer in there somewhere near where you live if you live in a very rural location, you'll have transformers on the poles of the power lines. They may not be the cylindrical ones, they're more American, 
but you will see them if you live in a rural location or if you you're out and about you'll see them on telegraph poles you'll also see something like that that might be attached to a power station or a substation and again that's a big transformer out comes them so we're going to explain effectively how transformers work how they induce a potential difference on the secondary coil and the other outcome is going to involve calculation so calculation values a potential difference in current in and out of the transformer and we'll be needing to use a power equation there which you've met in the electricity topic two tri types of transformer then so this is the first type of the transformer a step up Just look at that diagram there we've got a primary coil that's the first coil primary school is the first school that you go into and on this type of transformer we've got more turns on the secondary coil than the primary this means that the voltage that goes in is stepped up to a higher one so the one you can see in the diagram we've got about 110 volts coming in and 220 volts going out so it stepped it up by a factor of two which made the voltage about twice the size now these are used in the national grid on the power station side so if you use a step up transformer you can make the voltage very very high and the advantage of making the voltage high is it reduces the current we'll come to that when we're talking about power why that is if you can reduce the current on the cables they won't get as hot so you get less energy lost along the way inside a transformer we've got what's called a soft iron core soft iron means that it's easily magnetized and easily demagnetized it's not the same material as you'd want to make a permanent magnet out of because it's easy for it to lose the magnetism so you want something that will carry the magnetic field between the primary coil and the secondary coil but not stick and get the get a magnetic field stuck in it you want it to be able to change then the second type step down transformer this time it's just the way around you've got more turns on the primary coil than the secondary coil on that diagram we've got 50 turns on the primary and 10 on the secondary so the input voltage this time is stepped down to a lower one now we use these on the other side of the national grid when we want to take the voltage back down before it gets into your home or into your factory because that's going to make it safer so on the power cables we've got a very high voltage low current so we get less heating along the way I've set up this transformer I've got an alternating voltage across the primary so this is the primary the first one and then we've got the secondary over there connected by this soft iron core over here that's reading us the voltage that we're getting out so that's the voltage across the secondary coil and here we've got the voltage across the primary coil so i'm going to make a note you don't need to record these because i'm going to put them on the the slide after so to start off with the turns on the primary we've got that one's on naught that one's on 36 so we've got 36 turns that are being used on the primary on the secondary we're using 110 so more than double the voltage that we've got in so the voltage across the primary is 2.1 volts that's the potential difference and out we've got 4.1 volts so as this is set up now this is a step up transformer we're stepping up the voltage from 36 volts to 110 volts sorry from th with 36 turns to 110 turns so we're stepping up the voltage now mathematically what should happen is the ratio of that one to that one which would be 110 divided by 36 should be the ratio of that one to that one and it's not quite because we're getting a factor of about two times as we step up this voltage and this is getting towards well it's more than th it's more than three 
So that's telling us that it's not working exactly how it should do theoretically. That's to do with the efficiency. That's to do with losses that we've got in it. Let me explain quickly again, get the numbers out of the way before we do some changing. We've got an alternating current. So alternating current is going through this primary coil. So the alternating current is causing an alternating magnetic field. So it's growing, shrinking, growing, shrinking, alternating magnetic field. And that alternating magnetic field then cuts through the coil over here. So the alternating magnetic field travels through the core, cuts through the secondary coil and induces a potential difference. If we've got a circuit then over here, we'd have a, we'd have a, a circuit flowing and we'd have current as well. Let's change some values then. Let's turn it up. So we've got 4.3 now and 8.8. .8, so slightly more than double. I think you get the pattern. Let's whack it up a bit. 9.7 volts across the primary and that's giving 20. 20.8 and I've not changed the turns. It's going to turn that down and then I'm going to turn it off. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the number of turns that we're using here. I'm going to put that, that one onto 220. So we're now using 220 turns on the secondary. I'll leave that one on 36. So it's still a step up because we've got more turns on the secondary, but it should step up by a bigger amount. 2.2, oh, it's changed, 2.1 volts, being stepped up to 8.7. Let's try another one. 9.7 being stepped up to 42.2. So that's the step up transformer. An example now then of a step down transformer. I've swapped the coils around. So as it is at the moment on the primary, we're using 220. So 220 turns on the primary and 36 on the secondary. So we're stepping down because we've got less turns on the secondary. So we've got 9.9 .9 volts across the primary being stepped down to 1.2 volts. Let's just do one more. 13.2 being stepped down to 1.7. You have examples, lots of examples in your house of a step down transformer. I'll just get one off the laptop. So you'll all be familiar with one of these from a laptop. You plug it in. So you plug it in and you will be getting a potential difference of around about 230 volts. So inside here, we've got two coils. It's a smaller version of this. We are stepping down 230 volts that go in here, but I only need 20 volts to charge my laptop. So that is gonna be stepped down from 230 volts to 20 volts. And we'll do that as an example for you to do a calculation. Let's have a go at doing a the calculation then. So the ratio of the number of turns on the primary coil to the secondary coil is the same as the ratio of the input voltage to the output voltage. 
that's probably more complicated to say than it is to do. Let's just look at the numbers. So look at the diagram, the step down transformer. We've got 50 turns on the primary and only 10 turns on the secondary, which is a factor of five. So that will step down by five times. So the voltage across the secondary is only going to be a fifth what it was across the primary. So a thousand divided by five gives you the 200. So you'll see that on the formula sheet. You can use it if you want, or you can just talk about the ratios if we've been doing and do it that way. So the ratios or the fraction of the voltage across the primary divided by the voltage across the secondary, so that's a thousand divided by 200, is going to be the same as the ratio or the fraction of the number of turns on the primary divided by the number of turns on the secondary. So five divided by 10, so that's a factor of five. Five more turns on, five times as many turns on the primary, so there's five times more the potential difference across the primary. I'm going to give you a minute to have a go at this one. I've changed the numbers. Well, I've changed the potential difference across the primary and I want you to calculate the potential difference across the secondary. Halfway through your time, you can either use the formula, substitute the numbers in, or you can just look at the ratios. We've still got that factor of five. So 50 turns on the primary to only 10 turns on the secondary. So it's going to step it down by a factor of five. It's going to step down the 240, 240 volts by a factor of five. So the output voltage is five times smaller. So you do 240 divided by five and you should have got 48 volts as the output voltage. same calculation for you again I want you to find the output voltage on this step down transformer You can use the formula then, or you can do ratios. I prefer the ratio method, but you have to be a little bit careful. Make sure before you're doing the calculation, you're sure in your head what sort of answer you should be expecting. So this is a step down transformer. So you're gonna get less voltage coming out than went in. 150 turns on the primary, only 50 on the secondary. That's a factor of three, because 150 divided by 50 is three. So we're only gonna get one third, 12 volts divided by three, coming out 12 volts divided by 3 is going to give us 4 volts coming out so it's step down 12 volts to 4 volt number 3 this time I want you to work out the number of turns on the secondary it's still a step down transformer
Now this time we, have, we don't know the turns, but you can do a ratio of the voltage in over the, the voltage out, which is 100 over 25 is 4. So this step down transformer is going to step down by a factor of 4, which means the ratios of the turns must be 4 to 1 as well. So if we've got 200 turns on the primary, we've only got 200 divided by 4 on the secondary, which is 50 turns. So that'll give you a step down transformer by a factor of 4. Laptop charger then that we talked about in the video clip. We've got the number of turns on the primary. We've got 230 volts from the mains going in and 20 volts to charge our laptop coming out. Work out how many turns that you've got on the secondary for it to work. Before you do your calculation, always check that you know what sort of answer you're expecting. So it's a step down transformer, the voltage being stepped down. So the number of turns on the secondary is going to be less than the primary. If you end up with more, you've done it wrong. It's stepping down from 230 to 20. That's 230 divided by 20. It's 11.5. So it's stepping down by a factor of 11.5. So to step down by 11.5, we'll need 2,000 divided by 11.5 turns on the, on the secondary coil, which is 174 turns. I've got 173.9, so I've just put that to three significant figures. Obviously, you can't have um, a decimal point. You can't have point ninths of a turn. So I've put it to the nearest one, 174. Well done if you got that. We'll start off then. So we've got our primary coil the one that's now got the the battery on it and our secondary coil where we've got a voltmeter that can show positive negative potential difference on there so we can see the magnetic field around the primary coil at the moment because we've got a direct current flowing through that coil we've got an electromagnet or a solenoid and you can see the magnetic field around it now, because it's DC, that magnetic field is not changing. You'll notice then that there's no potential difference being produced. If I move the primary coil though and move it in and out, I can generate, induce a potential difference across the secondary one, but I'd need to be moving it. That's effectively how a generator works. Let's put it back over there. With a transformer, we need to use alternating current. So we've put alternating current through our primary coil now. You can see that the magnetic field is flicking backwards and forwards. So it's growing and shrinking and reversing. You can see it. we've got a small potential difference on the secondary coil. What I'm going to do now, first of all, just going to move it a little bit closer and we can see we've got a little bit more potential difference and you'll see that the potential difference being generated is moving backwards and forwards so it's alternating alternating current gives us an alternating magnetic field around the primary coil and because that's linked that alternating magnetic field cuts through the coils of the secondary inducing a voltage if i make 
the alternating current of a slightly higher frequency. There we go. I'm going to now put it a lot closer. Put it closer, we can now see we've got a higher alternating voltage. You could make that even more efficient by putting a soft iron core through there and then the soft iron core that you'd had would link them better and you'd have the alternating magnetic field going through the soft iron core. If I was to reduce the number of turns on the secondary, no, sorry, I've done that on the primary. If I reduce, reduce it on the primary, we've got a small magnetic field and therefore a small voltage induced on the secondary. Just to summarise then, it's probably a good idea if you make a note of this. A change in current, that's AC, in the primary coil produces a change in magnetic field in the core. This change in magnetic field cuts through the secondary coil, inducing a change in current AC in it. Let's talk through now the five steps to explain how a transformer works. So this is the first outcome, pretty much explain how the potential difference is induced in the secondary coil of a transformer. It could be a possibly a four mark question. We're going to start on the primary. So we've got a change in alternating current here. So we've got an alternating current there, a changing current. The alternating current produces an alternating or a changing magnetic field around the coil. The changing magnetic field then is carried round through the iron core and causes a changing magnetic field in the secondary coil. And then that induces a changing potential difference on the secondary coil. That's five steps in that answer. We'll now talk about power in a transformer to allow us to do the last sort of calculations that we'd need to do. In summary then, a step up transformer steps up the potential difference to a higher one. So we've only talked about potential difference voltage, that's all we've talked about so far. A step down transformer steps down the potential difference to a lower one. But there's a side effect of this happening. When a step-up transformer increases the voltage, the current decreases and, and it decreases by the same factor as the voltage increased. This is because the power on the primary side and the secondary side is the same. If so if a transformer is 100% efficient, we've got the power on the primary side is exactly the same as the power on the secondary side and we can use that to do the last sort of calculations. Power thinking back to electricity topic paper one physics you need to know this formula powers potential difference times current let's do a worked example you might find you can do it without really needing to use a formula but i'll show you the formula afterwards so in this calculation we've got a step up transformer because it's stepping up 10 volts on the primary side to 20 volts on the secondary side. And the reason it steps it up by a factor of two is because we've got four, coil, four coils on the primary side and eight coils on the secondary side. Eight divided by four is two. Factor of two, 10 volts times two gives you 20 volts. Right, so we've got that. Now let's introduce current as well. If I tell you then that we've got three amps on the primary side, I've told you that if the voltage is stepped up, the current is stepped down. So because the voltage has been stepped up by a factor of two, the current then will get stepped down by a factor of two. So if we start getting current out of the other side, it will only be 1.5 amps. Voltage has doubled, current has halved. And the reason for that 
is because the power's got to be the both both the same on each side. 10 volts times 3 amps gives you 30 watts. So we've got 30 watts power on the primary side. And we've got 20 volts and only 1.5 amps. 20 times 1.5 is 30 watts. So the power is the same on both sides if it's 100% efficient. All the exam questions will say it's 100% efficient. One for you to try then. This one is a step-up transformer and I want you to find the amount of current coming out two minutes. If you're really confident and you've done it very quickly, calculate the power on both sides for me. Power on the primary and power on the secondary. Thirty seconds left. Have you done then? There is actually more information on here than you need. You don't particularly need to know the turn numbers, but let's talk it through all of it. Four coils on the primary, 12 coils on the secondary, so it's a step up transformer stepping it up the voltage up by a factor of three. 12 divided by four is three. That's why the voltage has gone from 10 volts on the primary side to 30 volts on the secondary side. So it's stepped up the voltage by a factor of three. The current going in is six amps. So a step up transformer, if it's stepped up the voltage, the current is going to have to come down by the same factor. So the current needs to come down by a factor of three. Now the power on the primary side is 10 volts times six amps, which is 60 watts, which means that the power on the secondary side must also be 60 watts. So 60 watts equals 30 times something. So the something must be two amps. That formula is given on the formula sheet, which is the voltage on the secondary times the current on the secondary equals the voltage on the primary times the current on the primary. If you find that easier to use, then use that. If you quite like the method that I've generally used with uh, ratios, then use that. Reminder again, the questions all assume that the transformer is 100% efficient. Exam question here. It's worth about six marks, I think. I'm going to give you four minutes about a laptop charge. You're quite common sort of question. All the information is in there. I just want you to pick it out. Uh, there's three parts for you to do.
just coming up to halfway through your time part a is worth a few more marks so if you've just got part a done you're about on on schedule As a mark scheme then, for part A, really worth remembering this, explaining basically how Transformer works. So, got an alternating current, gives you an alternating change in magnetic field, and then that alternating magnetic field cuts through the secondary coil, and then gives you potential difference against the uh, across the secondary coil. 20 turns for B part 1. B part 2, it's missing the number of marks off there. Should be worth 2. It's 0 0.3 amps. Okay, then, pause the video, make notes on this. Some of this you might have made notes already. I've got transformers being used in the national grid on there. A little note on what step up and step down transformer does. We've got a power calculation, one that we've already done on there. And the equation for voltage and number of turns and the one for calculating power on the primary side and the secondary side. That's it for magnetism and electromagnetism. The only thing you've got left is the space topic if you're doing triple science. If you're doing that, I'll see you next time.